This time we test the AI Pro, but how does it compare to the G5 Pro and the G4 Pro? Yes, this is the AI Pro from Unify, which is, apart from the PTZ, their top of the line camera, I would argue. Now, I do think there's a little bit of confusion of what this does compared to the G4 Pro and the G5 Pro, which you can also still buy, of course. So in this video, I'm gonna compare them. But first, I think we need to look at this out of the box and maybe talk about some of the features that this specifically has before we start comparing it. All right, let's take it out of the box. It's always a very nice packaging with Unify. Oh, can I actually, oh, there we go. Look at that, you even got a little tap on it. Oh, look at that, that's very nice. Makes it easier. All right, come on, out you go. All right, so we'll, eh. Oh, the suspense. <laughs> oh, come on, there we go. You ready? Oh, very nice. All right, so here's all the different components we have First of all, the mount, either you can have it as a pole mount, which is this here, or just plain on the wall, which is what I'm going to do. You'll see that in just a second. Uh, please ensure the rubber grommet is securely fastened to prevent water damage. That is super important. We'll get to that. So there's the mount for the wall. Then there is the actual um, bit that the wire goes through. There's the rubber grommet. So the Cat 6 goes through there. This is a tool for fastening this properly. So that goes over here. And I'll show you that as well when you install it. And, oh, this is all very nice. Very thick metal here. You can hear it. All right, yeah, very good. And then we, of course, have the camera itself. Wow, this is a monger. Right, that looks sturdy. And we have here, what have we got here? What is that? That is a plug for a USB-C. And that, I'm gonna to get to that in the next video. So you're gonna to have to wait, but there's a USB-C. We'll get to that. Uh, that's where you plug it in. And this feels, again, this is really sturdy, quite heavy, but that is it. Oh no, there's a bit more in the box here. All right, we'll, we'll put that over there maybe. All right, so there's a quick start installation guide. We have a pole bracket thingy, and we have some screws, which will probably be for that. Excellent, very good. So I'm gonna install it just up here above my carport, pointing down the driveway, because that will become obvious, but we're gonna need some driveway to test this properly. Excellent, all right. Let's install. Okay, here's the plan. I've installed a flex switch or switch flex, uh, which is a switch powered switch. If you haven't heard of this, there's a video that I made on that, which is linked there. Um, now this is excellent because I don't need power out here other than the PoE. And yes, this is temporary. I'm doing this just for you lovely people watching the video so we can test these cameras. Now this is gonna be powering the three cameras and giving it connection. Uh, on the far end of this board, well, sort of the middle there, far middle, meh, we're gonna install the G4 Pro. In the middle here, we're gonna have the G5 Pro, and then at the end, we're gonna have the AI Pro, so that we can compare all of them together. And by the way, this is powered by my industrial switch, and again, if you haven't seen that video, please go and check it out, linked there. So first thing, we're gonna install the cameras, and before we can do any testing, so let's do that. to install the AI Pro camera and this might be a good time to remind you that if you'd like to support the channel there's many ways you can do it you could subscribe that's the link down below or the button that would be really cool that helps the channel a lot you could write a comment on 
you know, what do you think of the AI Pro or any of the other cameras? There's a super thanks um, button that you can press as well. And what about the merch? I made some really cool, oh, that, I wouldn't say t-shirts because you get them on all sorts of things, but they're down below as well. So yeah, if you want, I'd love to have you as part of the community and support the channel. So thank you. All right, let's install the AI Pro. Every time I put this rubber grommet in, it reminds me of that scene from Ace Ventura. All right, this is really important. Make sure the grommet is one, in the correct way, and two, it's gonna be really snug inside this because this is what prevents ants and wasps and water and all sorts of nasties getting into your camera. So this is really important to get that grommet right. Stick it through here and there we go. Make sure that's in really neat there. That's pretty neat like that. And then here's actually something I haven't seen before. There's a like a safety screw here as well that we can uh, tighten around this, which I haven't seen before. The others do not have that. So there's something extra just for a bit extra stability, I guess, to, uh, to secure it in there. All right. And then there's sits over there like this sort of thing and then this can swivel down obviously like that so let's just put the actual camera on there it is so we'll pluck this end in there's an IJ45 there there we go click and then it screws on here like that and this is a bit tricky because it's going to wind this up a bit just because the way the grommet is quite tight but that's all right a bit of careful twisting and you'll be all right and birds every time i record birds thank you so that's on um now remember that tool i showed you at the start this one there's like a plastic half circle or a bit more than the half circle that is for tightening it up to here so Let's just get the angle right, just like the other two. So it's about, about there. I'm going to adjust these afterwards once I can see the, the images. But, and then we screw this on, just like we did with the others. And then this just slides over, goes over this bit, and just slides on here, like that. And this is for tightening that bit. And it's very clever, so that you make, you know, you're sure that it's secured. Like that. I think that's actually I've completely messed that one up. Let me just fix that. That's better. All right. I'm gonna secure it again. And this also works with the other two, so you can put that on there too. And that one. And that way, you know, that's good. It's very clever. So now all that's left to do is for you to click subscribe and for me to pluck these into the switch. And then we're going to have a look at adopting it, look at some of all the features, and then compare them. Right, so let's adopt it. And I think the, the recommended approach to adopting cameras from Unify now is to use your phone. So we're going to do that. So I'm now here in my Protect app, and you can see here is the what's called Pool Camera. I'll rename that just in, sec, in a sec. That's the G4, and Office is the G5. So we'll use those when we compare it, but we won't do that just now. Instead, I'm gonna go here to my cameras and we're gonna adopt the AI Pro. So I'm gonna to tap to adopt. Adopting, new device found. Oh, it's making noise. Oh, and the blue light's on. Ding! All right, so we'll just wait for that to adopt and update. So that's pretty easy to adopt as always. I think we're gonna look at all the features and the settings um, on the desktop because it's cold out here. Yeah, let's do that. Anyway, it's working and they're all three there. Let's get testing. We're back in Unify Protect on the desktop because we get a bit more room for activities. And the first thing that pops up now that I have my first AI camera is this introducing face recognition pop-up thing. So accurately identifying individuals through facial analysis. That means that you can um, I guess log 
who is coming and going. So that's quite interesting. So we'll look at that in just a minute. I won't enable it just yet. So let's just go out of this one. So let's first find the uh, U, uh, Unify AI Pro Camera, which is here. And I'll have a look at features that are on here on this camera. So first of all, we can see here the overview, status, connection, model, etc. This is the same as you get on pretty much any other camera. And yep, we can see here the recording mode. We have um, the same as pretty much any other camera for recording mode. We have uh, when to record, recording mode continues or events only, depending on how much space you want to save, I guess. Then there's create motion events uh, settings, so however long you want to record before and after. Then there are the AI events. So these are the new events that we can detect with the AI range of cameras. So we have animal, license plate, person, and vehicle. And if I click on edit video detection types, you can see those are the only ones currently. But of course, with firmware updates, that can change. So that's kind of cool. So we'll test that a bit later on as well. Uh, and then we have audio detections. So these are different kinds of sound coming through. So in this case, we have barking, so from a dog, car alarm, car horn, CO2 alarm, or CO alarm rather, uh, carbon monoxide, glass breakage. So that could be if breaking a window, for example, and siren, plus two. Oh, there's two more. What we got? Um, what else can we choose? Smoke alarm and speaking. So we could get events for just speaking, so picking up uh, voices. That's quite neat, isn't it? That's a lot of different um, audio alerts. So we'll, we'll see if we can test some of those as well. I can't promise I'll do all of them because I don't have a siren. Then we have seconds added bef uh, before and after the AI detections. We have our recording quality. So do we want auto or custom? And in this case, we're running at 30 frames per second, which is the maximum. We'll get to specs in just a second of the camera. And then we have video compression, um, stories efficient or best image quality. I'm going for best image quality, uh, or actually that's the way it was set up. I haven't changed anything. Encoding, what is that? Improves video quality while reducing storage size. Okay, so this is a, an, a, a labs or beta uh, feature. So maybe they're looking at, they meaning Unify is looking at uh, optimizing the compression and the encoding. Recording resolution, 4K, 2K, or HD, so we can f choose that as well. Overlay information, I usually have the time and the camera name, not the logo. And then we have recording retention, which is your oldest recording and deleted to make room for new ones. So it just little loops, that's fine. I'm gonna apply my changes here. And then we have the last set, uh, tab here, which are settings. So let me just, uh, camera name, um, which I'm leaving an AI Pro for now, just so that we can better see which is which when we get to the comparison. And image tuning, um, I could open that, but to, due to the unique way that this is uh, created from Unify side, this then only does full screen. So it looks like this, which is not helpful considering I'm recording only a tiny bit of my screen because I have this massive 49 inch widescreen. So uh, take my word for it, that is the same as any other camera, you can choose the image quality and a few bits and pieces on that. Then we have down here, we have the new, uh, not new, but relatively new share live stream. This is really cool if you haven't seen this before. Every camera you can share a link that only one session at a time can use. So you could share this with you know, your parents or whoever needs to watch a certain camera. Notification settings, that's the standard notification settings, uh, which you can set up for uh, any of the cameras. Advanced is the RTSPS, real time, real time streaming protocol. I've used that for Llama Cam before. And then we have manage, which is your restart and remove, etc. So that's what there is in terms of um, settings, etc. So I mentioned before that there's facial recognition as well. There's a couple of other kind of neat AI things as well that I just want to show before we get to the comparison. So um, if I go to the settings for the entire console, the NVR here, down here under smart detection, there's now face recognition. So that's the one that the pop-up came up with to start with, right? So that's now turned off, turned on, and there's license plate recognition as well. So those are the two sort of new smart detections that come with specifically with the AI Pro uh, or the Pro range. And these options will show up when you connect a Pro camera to your Protect app.
so that's now turned on so we can now uh, we get another menu here called recognition which wasn't there before i'm pretty sure and we have license plates as you'd expect and you can see here there's one car that's detected that correctly and at the end here is the other one d d1 ddy dd which is also detected correctly but for some reason this car um will not detect it correctly i don't know why so that might just be a software thing it could be that the font is a bit odd as i mentioned but anyway i'll keep trying i'm sure it'll actually get better i would imagine over time and then it had one mishap with this one where it had a zero instead of a d so i guess that could look like a d if i'm turning the car so so it's not perfect but it's pretty good um i've only done a few tests as you can see so we'll see over time and then there's the faces as well so here we have faces and we've got jordan he's been seen four times um so you have face detection as well and those are really interesting you can say something like if you uh, as you have the name here, you can say that this is a person of interest. Sounds very ominous. And that means that you get notified when it's detected by an AI camera. So you can tick that if you wanted to. Um, and we can give a description, etc. So, for example, if there are, you know, oh no, the CEO is coming. <laughs> you want to know about that, you get alerted. I don't know. Whatever your scenario might be, right? But you can get alerted by that. And that's, by the way, it's the same for uh, for license plate. You can do the same thing. Vehicle of interest. So that's kind of neat. There's some neat AI features there. And then, as a little bonus, in case you haven't seen this, I just want to show you one more thing. So, if I go into my devices here, and I click on the AI Pro, and I open this up, there's a little thing up here at the top of this window called Add Shortcuts. I'm like, what do you mean, desktop shortcuts? No, it's not. If I click on it, it goes full screen, I apologize, that's just the way that Unify set this up. But you can click anywhere on the screen uh, or for the camera. So let's say, you know, here, I'll make sure you can see it. I click there and I can then choose which camera that would be. So that would be, say, the front door is that way. And now, so that's locked, you can see that. So when I go out of this full screen, you can see there's a little camera here, which is the icon of the actual camera. So this is a G5 Flex which is the front door. So I can click on that and it'll go to that. So you get sort of like navigation for it, which is kind of neat. So you can set up with all your cameras so you can sort of almost like a first person game, right? Like a first person computer game. You can click on the next camera where it needs to go. That's kind of neat. So I'm going to set that up for all of them and we'll see here. Um, that should be useful. So, all right, let's get to the comparison. So here we have the three cameras sort of side by side, G4 Pro, G5 Pro, and AI Pro. And immediately, I think the G4 Pro is a little bit more vivid in colors, is a bit, I'd say, optimistic, because I think the other two are probably more realistic, but I'm not swayed either way, it's okay. Uh, I'd say the image quality is about the same on all three. Um, for some reason, the G5 Pro is going in and out of um, pixelation and not, I'm not sure why, but I think, they're pretty good, all of them. I mean, they are pro cameras. They should be excellent, right? So that's not unexpected. So I can't really pick one over the other. I think they're all on par. So it's not the image quality that we are uh, trying to decide on. I would argue it's probably more on the other features. So uh, check out my video on the G4 and G5 Pro comparison as well for a bit more in depth on those two. That's linked up there. And we have now also the AI Pro. And I think the question would be, do you need those AI features or not? Um, and then the G4 Pro is probably more well built and it has gigabit connection, etc. But the G5 Pro is a little bit cheaper and maybe a little bit more refined. It's a tricky choice, right? Let's have a look at some of the AI detections that it can do, the AI Pro camera. So I've rewound a bit here on the timeline and you can see I have a car coming up. So I've down here, I have uh, enabled detection highlights, which is person, vehicle, animal, and face. And I'll then play it here and you'll see that it'll really far away detect the number plate. And it did actually, did, it did this in real time uh, as well. And you can see here that it gets it. It's an SUV, that is correct, full drive. And it, it recognizes the number plate correctly, which is pretty impressive. Impressive, And it looks pretty good. I like the graphics as well. So here is another car coming up. 
And this time it doesn't quite work. It doesn't actually read the number plate correctly. So I'm not sure if this has to do with the Australian font or something, but the first one was perfect. This one, not as much. It is not CR0N, but it is an SUV. So that is correct. It actually changes it over here. So if we go up to the next event up here, when I back out the car, it reads it again and it gets CRDN, which is also not correct. Um, so it's sort of, I'm not sure why. It's it's the same font as the other number plate. But okay, it is an SUV, that is correct. And now I get out of the car and it detects that I'm a person. So that is correct as well. And again, it follows me and there's another person. There's Jordan, hey Jordan. We'll see him again in just a minute. And then of course, we gotta have the dog. So there's the dog um, going around the dog. She's very old. She doesn't walk that well on her back legs, but she's very happy. Um, and there's another person coming out again. So yeah, we can we can we uh, we detect everything quite well dog human cars What type of car? I don't have a van or a sedan, but that I've seen that done as well. So the type of car is shown as well um, And we'll see up here. There's more dog as well. You can see that it continues to um, To detect the dog as well. So that works really well I'm not sure about the number plate Maybe someone in the comments can explain to me why because I've seen some really good examples of it working really really well But it may be calibrated to American fonts I'm not sure. Now, one of the features of this camera, of course, is also the two-way two audio. So let me just summon my helper onto the camera here. All right, so here's Jordan, my helper. Oh, I can hear him. If I turn up the sound a bit, let's see. He's waving at me because he's waiting for me to talk. All right, let's try here. Is it working? Hello? Oh, you can hear me. All right, so it appears that Jordan can actually hear me. He's nodding, very good. Um, say something funny. Hello. Oh, that, that wasn't funny. Oh, but all right, well, it's, it appears that he can hear me and I can hear him, so you can talk through it. You, I have to be on this preview pane though, George, in order to talk to you, so I'm not sure why that wasn't on the phone. But anyway, all right, you can go home now. Thank you, bye. Very good. So you can talk two-way as well with it, which you cannot do on the G4 and the G5. So that's kind of neat. Right, it's night time. So let's see how they do at night with the infrared on. So all three cameras, the AI Pro, the G5 Pro and the T4 Pro, all have night vision as auto and IR filter and IR LED are all set uh, as well. So they all have the same setting. So let's start with the G4 Pro. Now here's something I recorded earlier because I learned in uh, the video where I uh, compare the G5 bullet to the G4 and G3 bullet that I need to turn off the IR on the other two cameras when I compare these things. Hmm, yeah, I've learned. So here is the G4 Pro only with the IR on and you can see it's pretty good. It's, re you know, it's quite detailed. You can't see that far down the uh, end here with this little hedge thing in the lawn. Um, so yeah, that's about the end of it, roughly, I think. If we then look at the G5 Pro, relative, roughly the same image, obviously. You can see it's much more detailed. The IR is much more wide, like it goes out. If you look at the, the left-hand side here compared with G4 Pro, it's very dark, and the right-hand side is very dark. The G5 is way different. Um, and you can see it, it gets down to oh, a bit further, I'd say. A little bit further is the reach of it, um, but very detailed. I quite like this one. And then we have the AI Pro, which is live. So very similar to the G5 Pro, I'd say. It's a little bit brighter maybe, and the range is about the same, but very similar. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure which one I like better. That is a little bit darker. Maybe it looks slightly more detailed, but I like that there's a little bit more light. So yeah, maybe that's... Horses for courses, um, and it looks like I should adjust the camera a little bit. It's a little bit crooked, isn't it? Anyway, we can do that later. Um, yeah, so that's the, the difference between the three cameras at night. Now, um, let me just find a footage with a person. Guess who? Uh, one second. So here's first the uh, G4 Pro, um, and I'll just play that here a little bit. You can see that it's, it's a little bit washed out, but you can see, you know, there's a human and a dog. Then we have the G5 Pro, which again is a little bit more detailed. You can see it here. You know, I'm 
scratching the dog. Um, oh, and there goes the IR off. And then we have the uh, AI Pro, and this is a little bit washed out because I kind of messed up a little bit and I forgot to remove the plastic cover, uh, the protective thing that comes out of the box. So this is a little bit more washed out than it would be otherwise, but anyway, apologies for that. But you get the idea that it's, um, it's pretty crisp. So I'd say the G5 Pro and the AI Pro pretty much on par when it comes to the night vision part of it. Um, I, yeah, I can't really tell the difference. But anyway, there we go. That's the night vision part of it. Right. So that's the range of programmers currently from Unifos. So uh, kind of final thoughts. First off, I don't think I would bother with the G4 Pro. It's a great camera, don't get me wrong, but it's more expensive than the G5 Pro. And I don't think the infrared is as good. And I think the image quality is probably better on the G5 Pro. So that's kind of an easy decision for me. The much harder decision is AI Pro or G5 Pro. Well, they have the same lens. The image quality is very similar. They're both very good. Um, the infrared seems to be about the same. It depends on whether you want the AI features. So the G5 Pro does have some AI features, such as vehicle detection and person detection, but do you need the facial recognition? Do you need the number plate detection? Do you need the, um, the sound, so the broken glass and those other sounds that come off? Like, what do you need? It really depends on that, I think. So let me know in the comments, which, which do you prefer? Am I completely wrong about the G4 Pro? Or you know, anything else? And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that, clicking the button below, or any other way that you can support the channel, because I really would appreciate it. So next video though, we're gonna change the game a bit again um, with the AI Pro, so stay tuned for that. All right, bye. In this video, it's AI Pro time. This time we test the G... No, we don't. This time it's the AI Pro we're testing, but also the G5 Pro and the G4 Pro.